Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. In today's game, up on the tabletop is Wormspan by Stonemaier Games. Wormspan is a 1-5 to five player board game for ages 14 and up and it takes roughly 90 minutes to play. And it is the sequel to Wingspan by Elizabeth Hargrave. Now Wormspan is the new sequel to the game, but it is not a rebrand. This is actually a not only remake, but with unique new additional mechanics that are going to be installed in the game. Now you're going to be having a Dragon's Day. Den. You'll be adding caves and you'll be going through three different locations, the grotto, the cavern, and the abyss, each with their own unique spaces for cave systems and, of course, yes, dragons. There are a variety of new dragons in the game and there are quite a, a lot, in fact, very similar to the amount of birds in Wingspan. Going through the game, you'll be placing down caves and dragons, moving along specific dragon guilds with numerous different choices of dragon guilds to start with, all along with going through the first, second, third, and fourth rounds of the game. And in each round, there are unique objectives that you'll have to earn. At the end of the fourth round, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game, Wormspan. We'll take a look at how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. To set up the game Wormspan, the first thing you do is determine the number of players playing the game. In this case, I have two, but you can play up to five. Each player is going to get their own unique board that you'll unfold and place in front of that player. There'll be a dragon guild space, there'll be a round tracker area, and there'll be a place where you'll place dragon and cave cards. To start, take the Dragon Guild board and place it in the middle of the table and choose a random Dragon Guild. I have the Guild of the Highlands that I have selected. Uh, go ahead and take this and place it right in the middle. Each player is going to get colored uh, wooden miniatures or wooden meeples that you'll place down on the start space. They look like little shields. Go ahead and then take the round board. Take the pink little circle and place it on the first round right above the right below the one where the active and then space is along with four random scoring boards and place them down below in the score spaces then take the different eggs and the different components in the game they're going to be eggs for the dragons and then they're going to be meat uh, crystals, milk, and gold that you'll have as resources throughout the game. Place them within reach as well as our active tokens. These are the tokens we'll use throughout the game as we take our actions. There are also multipliers in case we run out of tokens. A times two and a times five you can place next to those tokens. The Cave and Dragon Board. Take all the dragons and all the caves, shuffle them up in two separate decks, and then deal out three dragons and three caves face up on the board, where players can go ahead and purchase as the game progresses. Last but not least is our main game board that's set up and placed in front of us, as well as, of course, our meeple of our chosen color on base camp, all of our wooden cubes that we set aside the bottom left-hand side of the board, as well as eggs and our specific tokens and resources. We'll also get cards. We'll start with eight cubes, one egg, and then we'll also start with uh, six of these dragon scale markers. Three random resources of your choice, as well as three cave cards and three dragons. Then have each player choose four cards. You can choose three dragons and a cave, two dragons and two caves, three caves and one dragon. It's really up to you. In this case here, I'll just take two dragons and a cave, discarding the other two. From there, you're basically ready to begin the game. Make sure that you have everybody on the start position and everybody's little meeple is on base camp and you're ready to go for some warm span. Playing the game Wormspan is similar to playing the game Wingspan. There are a very select amount of actions that you will take. You will basically be placing dragons down. You will be taking and triggering actions across the three different biomes and scoring various victory points as well as additional cards and resources. But it doesn't play exactly the same and so we'll get into it. First off, we'll choose the first round and everybody has all the resources provided for the setup and then the first player will start, and I'll be the first player, I'll be red. Uh, basically how it works is you'll choose one of three different actions, or you can choose to pass. There are three actions, you'll choose one of them, and after that it'll be the next person's turn, and then you'll continue from there going clockwise. The first action you can take is excavate. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to pay the cost to do the action. You're always going to have to pay this dragon scale as a cost, and you only have six of them to start for each round, so make sure that you use them wisely. Pay the cost for the dragon scale, plus whatever is printed on the column for excavating, and then you can play a cave card from your hand face up on the field. Remember that the first column is actually going to be filled in already for you, so you can place dragons there without having to place caves. 
When you place one of these caves down in one of these locations, in the first column you can place them in, it's free. The second one will cost you an egg, and the third one will cost you two eggs and will give you a bonus if you can place it there. You may never place a cave farther along on a row that a column doesn't already previously have a cave. So you have to start from the first position, move to the second and third for each of the three biomes. Each cave is gonna have a unique ability, whether it be tucking two dragon cards from the deck under one of your dragons, gaining a number of resources, gaining bonus actions, etc., etc. They're also so you are able to play dragons on top of them. You can't ever play a dragon unless there's a cave underneath. The next thing that you could choose to do is entice. You can basically, once again, pay a dragon scale which are basically ways of reminding you how many actions or you can take during a round. And you can also go ahead and play a dragon. Dragons have a variety of unique things on the card. First thing is the name. Second thing is under the bottom or top left area is going to be the resource cost. On the right hand side, it'll tell you the size of the dragon, how many eggs it can have and how many victory points it's worth. As well as on the middle left, it will tell you which of the three biomes it can go in. Some of them can go into multiple biomes. On the very bottom, we'll give you a unique action. The action could be something when you place it, when a character, when your character uh, explores onto the dragon, etc., etc. All the dragons do various different things in the game. So if I wanted to, I could play this Altotic Amphitheater uh, to place uh, two gold down. I could spend that gold, place it in one of the three different biomes, uh, a biome that's actually capable of going in. And now I have the unique ability of whenever I basically explore this dragon, if I have at least as many dragons in my golden grotto as my neighbor to my left, I get to draw another dragon card. And that's how it works, placing one of these dragons down on a space that has a cave. As long as there's a cave, you can place it pretty much anywhere. Uh, and then finally, there is the last action, which is to explore. In order to explore, you actually have to pay the cost at the cave entrance you'd like to explore. And each time you explore after the first, there's a more increased exponential cost for the cave. So for instance, Crimson Cavern is gonna cost a dragon scale for your first explore, a dragon scale and a egg for your second, and a dragon scale and two eggs for your third. You may not explore space more than three times in a round. Each of the costs are similar uh, with just the three different options to choose from and you may only ever go three times. So if I wanted to explore, we'll go ahead and make a little mock presentation here. I'll place down some caves and dragons. What happens is you will place your specific guy who is on your base camp on one of the three columns. I'm choosing Golden Grotto here. Then I'm going to choose and move my adventurer from the left hand position to the furthest right space just before the stop sign. That indicates I can't go any further. And as I move, I'm going to take and gain benefits. The first thing here will let me draw a card. You always look at the bottom position after checking the dragon. There's no dragon on the first column area, so I will be able to draw a dragon card. Moving on to the next space, I triggered this ability and it says if I have at least as many dragons as the neighbor to my left, I get to draw another one. Oh look, Bill over here only has one, so I do have at least as much. So I get to draw another dragon. I can always draw from the top of the deck or from the face-up area here. If I ever do draw one from the face-up area, I replace it. Then I'm going to gain the benefit. Here is a guild symbol. Whenever you gain a guild symbol, you'll move your marker uh, clockwise on the guild track here, and you're going to gain the benefits associated, whether it be resources, eggs, cards, etc. Additionally, if you get to the bottom area of the guild section, you'll actually get to place one of your markers on to one of the various different guild areas here. Placing them down, as long as there's a space you can place them, these are gonna either give you end game victory scoring abilities, whether it gives you different bonus actions in the game or various resources and cards, the choice will be up to you based on the guild. And you'll basically be moving along this guild track as you progress throughout the game. And then I will move on to the next area. Another card also can reveal a card from the deck and if it's a hatchling dragon, I can tuck it under this specific card. My caustic worm likes to eat little dragons so I can place another dragon underneath it. Drawing another dragon card, and then I would move on to the next area, but sadly there's a stop sign, which means I no longer can move. And that are those are the three different actions. Excavating, placing down caves, enticing dragons to join your caves, and exploring the three different various areas in the game board. Each area has unique resources that it focuses on, whether it be various resources, dragons, and caves, as though depending on what you need will determine where you're going to place your explorer. After you've chosen one of these three actions, then you're done. If you choose to pass, then you do nothing. 
You can choose the paths when you have resources here, these little markers here, but that's going to end you in the end the round for you, and you have to save these for the next round, which means you can carry them from round to round. Um, but you can always spend all of them, and if you do, you must pass. Once everybody has passed a round, the round will end. When the round ends, you're then going to activate any end of round abilities, and then you're going to score for whatever the end of round scoring tile is. This one here says there are total eggs on all your dragons, and whoever has the most is going to score four points, then one, then zero for third, and zero for fourth. And for each round, as you progressively go from round to round, you're going to have more difficult um, achievements that you'll need to get you'll need to look at because they're going to give you more victory points along with at the beginning of each round you are going to refresh all of these cards here these dragons and these caves you're going to gain six new skill markers and you're going to get one additional dragon egg dragon eggs can be saved in the bottom left hand side of your game board or you can place them on dragons on your main game board and each dragon has a limited number of dragon eggs that they can hold my caustic worm can have two it's a medium dragon and my allotic can actually have two as well but there are some that have zero eggs one egg a billion eggs it really just depends on the dragon well, there you go. That's the basic idea of the game. You'll be progressing, placing down the different workers on the three different areas here, choosing to pass, scoring at the end of every round, refreshing, resetting, moving around the Dragon's Guild up until you come across the last round of the game. You'll finish that round and then you're going to score and whoever has the most points is the winner. And you'll develop points from the Guild area from your various dragons and their various victory points up on the top right hand side of the cards here and from having any leftover resources. Whoever has the most points at the end of this round is the winner of the game, Wormspan. Last thing to note is there are spaces on the game board at the very end that are going to provide you with a bonus. When you place down your caves in the last spaces, they do cost more to excavate, which means you're going to have to pay two additional eggs. But in turn, you're going to either get three resources, cards, or caves, um, or you can turn these guys in to actually gain tokens, so you get extra actions throughout the round. And if your character uh, does happen to explore all the way through, there's a last bonus action that they can take with the various resource types of the various different locations. Like, for instance, Crimson Cavern will let you cash up to two resources of your choice from your supply onto any of your dragons. Resources and cards under dragons or on top of dragons are bonus points at the end of the game as well. In fact, there is a wonderful little scoring chart here that goes through all the different things. The printed costs on the dragons, uh, end game abilities of dragons, a point per egg, a per point per resource on a dragon, a point per card that's tucked under a dragon, usually eaten cards, as well as public objectives and the various resources that you'll have throughout the game. And whoever has the most of them, I think you've got it. That's the basic idea of the game. Okay, what do I think about Wormspan? So based on the rules of the game Wormspan, you'll notice that this game does share a lot of similarities to uh, Wingspan. It is a very similar style of game. It's a very straightforward action management, tableau management, resource gathering type of game. No dice in this game though, instead you're just going to gather resources from exploring the three different biomes here, utilizing the three biomes for different resources, and of course the more dragons on each biome that you have, the more powerful your explorability is going to be. Excavating and enticing dragons and making the putting the caves down, putting the dragons down is going to be a like a really important part of this game. It's what will allow you to gain new resources and victory points. It's what will allow you to achieve certain objective completion cards, whether it be having the most cave cards on a map, the most eggs, uh, maybe a specific type of a dragon, like an aggressive dragon. The most aggressive dragons on your field is going to score you points, and then. And it's also rewards. Like caves is not a thing in Wingspan. This is this is like specifically Wormspan only. And instead of just having to have a dragon on the left hand side and placing a new one on the right hand side, like in a row, now you have to go cave dragon, cave dragon, cave dragon, progressing all the way to the end. Uh, otherwise, though, this action is very similar. And the other action of placing down dragons is the same as placing down birds. The new aspect is the caves, and the caves are basically 
put the card down, pay any cost if applicable, and then gain the unique benefit. And having to select additional caves now kind of brings out a unique new um, aspect to the game. Now you are getting a instant benefit from a cave that you only have to take once per space, along with placing a dragon on the cave, which kind of adds this unique little aspect to the theme of the game. Dragons have to live in caves, and so in order to have a dragon on a space, you must have a cave there. And there's a variety of different caves to choose from, I also love the fact that you can pull from the top of the deck. It gives you a wide variety of options, and then if you don't have the need of those, you can pull additional cards. I also like the different various resources for the game. I think the change in resources and skin for the game works very well with dragons. Now you have dragons that like milk, that like meat, they like to protect jewels and gold, and it automatically works very well. The eggs are beautiful, as always, and these guys, these guys you have little dragon eggs now associated with the different dragons in the game. Uh, if you were to ask if this game was similar to Wingspan, it would be a yes, it obviously is. There are a bunch of unique little aspects to the game, like the guild and the caves that have changed, but I would say that it's, con it's consistently the same with other type of uh, Wingspan games and the expansions and whatnot, but this has a new light. Now, this is enough where you could actually pick this game up and it be a different experience, but it's going to be a similar experience. Once again, the dragon artwork, the style, the beautiful quality of the components of the game, all of that is wonderful here. The new aspects are, of course, the dragon guild portions, where you're going to be moving around this game board, gaining unique effects for end game bonuses, gain a victory point for every cave on your mat. Wow. Or simply gain six victory points. And there's only a number of spaces that you can place moving around this guild, and you have to kind of choose what you want to do. You can never complete everything in this game. That's kind of the point is having to select a few paths that you want to take and then at the end being satisfied with what you were able to complete as opposed to doing just about everything. And that makes it great. It makes it good for replayability. And I really, really enjoyed this game. Personally, for me, this is a better game than Wingspan. Maybe not to my wife. I had to have to ask her, I suppose. But I like the style of this game. I like the uh, dragon aspect of this game. And it feels like it's got a little bit more meat here. Now you've added additional card types. You have a guild they can choose to move around on. Um, all with the same feel and style of the game a Wingspan. I would still say this is probably in the same middle ground territory, like a mid-difficulty type of a game, mid-heaviness as Wingspan. Maybe a little bit of a kick up, as well as, of course, the unique theme. If you're looking to have some more Wingspan in your life with a little unique twist with dragons, this is definitely a pick up. If you've never heard of Wingspan before and you want a great Euro style game, uh, tableau management type of a game, you're going to really dig Wormspan as well. It's a great way to get people into the hobby uh, for these type of games. It's uh, very in unintrusive and it's simple once you understand the basic concepts to it and it's gonna leave you wanting to play more and more as you progress. If you're interested in taking a look at the game Wormspan, I strongly suggest you do too. It's getting my high recommendation because not only did I like Wingspan, but I love Wormspan. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Wormspan. If you're interested in taking a look at the game, you can go ahead and check out our link down below in the description. And if you would like, you can hit the subscribe button. The subscribe button and the bell notification button to see more videos that we produce every week. It's been a little bit shorter this week because of the baby, but otherwise, normally it's about two, three times a week, plus a live stream on Sunday at 6 30 p.m. PST on Facebook, YouTube, whatnot, and X. Uh, whatnot streams are Thursdays. We sell games similar to this one here. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, I look forward to spending time with you and Wormspan next time.